Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today we're talking about ribbon microphones. Now, ribbon microphones were invented in the early 1920s and they were one of the earliest types of microphones that were commercially available. A ribbon microphone is a very simple type of microphone. What we have is a thin strip of conductive material, typically low mass metal like aluminum, that's suspended inside a magnetic field. The ribbon moves back and forth in response to sound waves and that induces a current from the microphone. To increase durability and also to improve the frequency response of the microphone, the ribbon is typically corrugated, so it looks sort of like an accordion suspended between the poles of the magnet. By nature of their design, most ribbon microphones have a figure eight or bidirectional polar pattern. This means they pick up equally well from the front and from the back. Ribbon microphones also have extremely natural off-axis response. They sound basically consistent as you move around the polar pattern. The figure eight polar pattern in a ribbon mic results because sound entering from the front or from the back of the mic causes the ribbon to move back and forth, but sound entering from the side doesn't cause the ribbon to move. This results in a deep null on the side of the polar pattern and very effective isolation for rejecting sound sources. There are a few disadvantages with ribbon microphones. Older designs in particular were quite delicate. Modern ribbon mics are sturdy, they'll stand up to high sound pressure levels, and you can use them in just about any situation. Ribbon microphones also have very strong proximity effect. Now this means that when you get close in, you're going to get a big bass boost. This is both an advantage and a disadvantage because you can take advantage of that bass boost to fatten up your sounds, but if you're trying to get a cleaner sound yet still be close in, dealing with that proximity effect can be a bit of a challenge. But there are many great advantages to ribbon microphones. The first of these is that because of the way the ribbon is suspended and tensioned, its resonant frequency is above the range of human hearing. This means that detail and high frequency response is extremely accurate. In fact, many people describe ribbon microphones as sounding basically the way that our ears hear. Because of the extremely low mass of the ribbon and that high frequency detail, ribbon microphones have extremely good transient response. They're extremely accurate on transients. They don't have overshoot like some condenser microphones do, and they're more natural sounding than many dynamics. One thing you have to be careful of with ribbon microphones is gusts of wind or bursts of air hitting the ribbon element, because that can actually cause that element to stretch out, which changes the frequency response and the sound of the microphone. So you want to protect this with a pop filter if you have a vocalist in front of it. If you have it in front of something like a drum set or a kick drum, you want to angle the microphone so it's not getting directly struck by a blast of air. And if you're outside in the wind, you definitely want to use some sort of wind protection on the microphone. There are two basic types of ribbon microphones on the market today, passive and active, and I have examples of each here. This is the R121 from Royer. This is a passive ribbon microphone. That means that the ribbon element passes through a transformer and is then sent into your mic preamp. Generally, passive ribbon microphones are fairly low output. This means that you want to connect them to a preamp that has good gain and also clean gain, so you're not getting extra noise added into the signal. A preamp that also allows you to adjust the impedance can let you tailor and shape the sound of what's coming out of that microphone as well. An active ribbon microphone, like the N22 from AEA that I have here, has built-in electronics. Now, those electronics serve two purposes for us. First of all, they isolate the microphone from the preamp so we don't have impedance issues. Second, they boost the gain up so we don't have noise issues. Both types of microphones, active and passive, work and sound great, and they can be used on a variety of different sources. For example, traditionally, you'd place a ribbon microphone on brass instruments, trumpet, trombone, those sorts of things. They also sound wonderful on electric guitar because they hear the way our ears do, and they tend to smooth out some of the harshness. I've used ribbon microphones as overheads on drum kits. They're great as a stereo pair on a piano. You can use them for vocals. Traditionally, a lot of the jazz vocals, the vocals of the 30s, 40s, and 50s were recorded on ribbon microphones. It's a rich, round, natural tone. So these are very versatile microphones that can be used in a ton of different situations. So when should you choose a ribbon microphone? They're ideal when you want to have a natural sounding recording, something that sounds like what your ears are hearing in the room. They're also great for taming harshness. And with that figure eight pattern, a ribbon microphone is very useful for isolating a particular sound source. A great trick is to use a pair of ribbon microphones for stereo recording. Place them in what's called a bloom line configuration, one above the other at 90 degrees, so you're picking up the room from behind and a stereo image of the direct sound in front. Ribbon microphones are so versatile, they're so effective and so natural sounding that they really should be a part of every microphone locker.